We're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 this morning. You can turn there, but it's going to be a bit before we get there. Last week, or excuse me, I should say, my title is Why God Says No and How We Should Respond When It Happens. <laughs> Last week, we talked about faith being knowing that God has the ability to do the impossible. But that even though you have faith, you may not believe that he will do it for you. And we talked about Jesus returning after the resurrection so that his followers would not only have faith in who he was, but believe that he is capable and was willing to do it for them. In fact, he even showed up to Thomas and said, Thomas, I don't care what it takes. Put your finger in my hands. Put your hand in my side. If that's what it takes for you to believe, believe and stop disbelieving. But as I was preparing that sermon all last week, talking about God interceding for us in our prayers, and that He wants us to believe, not just have faith. In all of that, my mind as I prepared kept getting flooded with questions of, what if? And would God really? And what happens when he doesn't answer? Because let's face it, right? That's the problem. What happens if in those circumstances? When God doesn't answer the way we expect. As a foundation for last week and this week, I want us to get and accept two things. First of all, God always gives us an answer when we pray. God always gives us an answer. We may not like the answer, but He always gives us an answer. And the second part to that is, more often than not, the answer is yes. Before I get into what happens when the negative happens, John chapter 10, verse 10, the last part of the verse Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. This isn't just for eternity. This is for today, where we walk today. Jesus came that we would have life and that we would have an abundant life, that we would have a great life. He has great plans for us, right? Jeremiah says. Jesus also says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you? If a son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? You, boy, I'm glad my dad didn't do that. I'm, I hate snakes. <laughs> If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? Both of these statements were given to us by Christ Himself. If we're going to try and find out God's character and God's nature, or the way God answers, He's probably a good source, don't you think? If Jesus says, when you ask you'll receive. When you seek, you will find. When you knock, it will be opened. We can take that to the bank. More often than not, we have the idea that God does not answer in the positive. That He wants to answer in the negative. That He wants to give us just enough to get by. And don't worry, this is definitely not a health and wealth <laughs> name it and claim it sermon. But God, more often than not, more often than we think, loves to answer in the yes. That being said, what happens when he doesn't? How do you handle it when he gives you an answer that you either weren't expecting or you didn't like? I want to answer that question this morning. Why does God say no? And how should we respond? As in many sermons, I've only got a few points. You know me better than that. But even in the many points that I have, <laughs> this is not exhaustive. There's a lot more you could pull out. These are the ones that I found, all right? 
And please forgive me, my, our key passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 is going to come at the end in the conclusion for emphasis. I'm doing it on purpose, not forgetting my passage. So sometimes the answer we get is not yet. In those times, God might be trying to teach you something. Maybe there's something that's going on in your life that he needs to take care of. You remember in Joshua chapter 7, the children of Israel have just taken over Jericho. They're living high on the hog. They're really expectant. They know that they're going to do great, and they rush into Ai with just a few men and get whipped. Joshua comes back and gets on his knees before God and says, why are you doing this to us? Why did you bring us out here just to kill us off? A little, little AI, we couldn't even beat them. And God's response was, get up from where you're sitting. <laughs> what are you doing here? There's sin in the camp. You know, God would love to bless you and God would love to give you wonderful things in your life, but he cares more about your character than your comfort. And just a little bit of sin will rot the best of God's desserts. And more often than not, the reason we don't get a positive answer is because we are living in a way that is contrary to the blessings of God. We're living in a way that would bring us death and destruction in our life. And as we do that, God can't bless it. They couldn't move any further in the promised land until Achan was taken care of. Maybe the reason God hasn't answered you is because he's trying to teach you something. And y'all better learn it quick. Because <laughs> you know what God likes to do? He likes to teach us something. And if we don't learn it, guess what he does? He lets you take a retest. <laughs> and then he takes, you take another retest. And you take another retest. And he keeps coming back, doesn't it? <laughs> Jonah, when he prayed to get out of the belly of the great fish, what did God tell him? <laughs> All right, time to go back to Nineveh, buddy. He didn't say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to let you off the hook. No, <laughs> you get to go right back to where you were going in the first place. God cares more about your character than he does your comfort. And he doesn't want to see the sinful route that you are taking continue where he can't bless you. The next thought is sometimes our answer is not yet because he is creating a real hunger so you will better enjoy it. You remember the prodigal son? <laughs> Luke 15. He's run off. He spent all of his dad's money. And now he's feeding the pigs. And he got so hungry. He was willing to eat right out of the slop bucket. The leftovers that the pigs had. You know you're hungry when you're willing to eat what the pigs don't. Now when I was in high school. One of the jobs that we had after school was we had to take the slop bucket to the pigs at the farm. And so you would go over to the dining hall and you would gather all of the junk leftovers that were on people's plates, all the stinky, nasty goo that was in a bucket this big and about that wide, and you'd put it on the tractor and you'd drive it over to the farm and then you'd dump it out for all the pigs. If you had to, I didn't drive the tractor. I didn't know how to drive a tractor. Others did. So you know what that meant my job was? Sit there and hold that stupid thing as you go a mile down the road jumping up and down. It was not a pleasant experience. And the smells, I'll be honest, were not great. And it wasn't very often after doing the slop that I was hungry. The prodigal son was willing to eat even what the pigs wouldn't eat. You know, sometimes God says... I'm not going to answer you yes yet because he wants you to get hungry. Sometimes, have you, have you ever just not eaten for a long time and then you get the chance? There's been several times when I've taken rather lengthy fasts and I have craved and missed things. I remember I did the Daniel fast and the, the oddest thing that I craved after three, four weeks, three weeks, was I craved cheese and butter. Because I couldn't have those. <laughs> and I devoured them and got terribly sick afterwards because it tasted so good. 
you know, if God was just to answer our request right away, let's face it, we probably wouldn't enjoy it as much, would we? But if we see it out there, and we know it's there, and we know it's coming, what does John Panay says? He says uh, he doesn't mind eating salad because it's a promissory note that better things are yet to come. <laughs> I don't even like salad, but I, I'll agree with him. You get hungry, you salivate. And sometimes God says, you know what? I'm not going to answer you yet because I want you to enjoy this. I say it all the time. You can't lead a horse to water and make him drink. But if you wander him around enough and make him thirsty, <laughs> then he will. And sometimes that's the way the Lord answers us. Sometimes he says not yet so that he will receive a greater glory. You remember the story of Lazarus? Oh, I missed one. Sorry. I'll get back to it. Um, you remember the story of Lazarus in John chapter 11? The scripture literally says that Jesus loved Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. And yet, only being two miles away, he waited for four days before showing up after Lazarus was already dead. But in that passage, he tells his disciples... Two miles away, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Sure, there was going to be a few people that would have praised the Lord when Lazarus was healed if he had shown up the same day. It was only two miles away. We're not talking about a long, a long journey. But how many people were praising the Lord after they saw him walk out of the tomb bound in grave clothes? Right? Sometimes God says, you know what? I'm not going to answer you yes right yet because I want to do something great. And let's be honest. Probably too honest. How many of us praise God publicly when we don't have any problems? I won't talk about our, you know, does anybody have a testimony this morning? I won't say anything about that. I won't even point it out. I won't even bring it up. How many of us testify publicly that God's doing something great in us? But then what do we do <laughs> when we're in the fiery furnace? Or we're in the lion's den and we need God to do a miracle to keep their mouths shut? Immediately afterwards, everybody hears about it, don't they? When the bill is not, there's no money to pay it, and all of a sudden you get the check in the mail, which has happened to Sonia and I, we tell about it. Sometimes God says, I'm going to hold off just a little bit from yes so that when it does happen, I get more glory. And you know what? If that's what it takes for God to get more glory out of my life, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to go through a little bit of a struggle so that He gets praise. Amen? Also, you're not yet... Him saying, let's hold off a little bit. As you go through the struggle, maybe the help that somebody else needs when they're in their struggle. And we're going to talk about that towards the end of the service. When the answer is not yet, we keep seeking and we learn to be content. Why? Because we know God's got it. We know God's going to take care of it anyway, right? Sometimes... We got to pray about it again. And sometimes we got to pray about it again. And sometimes God still doesn't answer. And we'll talk about that at the end of the service. <laughs> sometimes we got to keep asking. And you know what? If he hasn't answered with a yes or no, we keep asking until he does. And in the meantime, we learn to say, okay, God, what you've given me is enough. And sometimes that's easy. Sometimes that's hard. Sometimes our answer isn't not yet, but it's a flat no. Aren't you all excited about that one? <laughs> Don't you just love it when you have this great plan, this great hope? God, if you gave me a million dollars, the things that could take place in our nation, what I could do in my ministry, if you just drop that bomb right now, great things are going to happen. And God says, no. <laughs> But Lord, I got all of these. I could do something. No. <laughs> you know, if God answered our requests with yes all of the time, 
if he did everything we wanted him to do, he wouldn't be God, we would. We'd be God and he'd be our little genie in a bottle and we'd rub him whenever we need him to give us an answer or a yes. Folks, he's God. Let him be God. And sometimes that means if you're his servant, he tells you no. Let me put it in a different way. You're not God. So suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> put on your big boy pants and move on. You don't get everything you want out of life. If we're willing to tell our children that, God could probably tell us that, shouldn't he? Sometimes the answer is no because we're praying for things that are outside of his will. Hey, Jesus in the garden, remember? Lord, Father, not my will, but yours be done. That's a whole lot better prayer than, God, I need this, I want this. Because sometimes we're praying in a place that is outside of his will for us that will bring us harm, that will bring others harm. And folks, we don't want him to answer those prayers. God sees being outside of time. God sees the un unintended consequences of our request. On Friday night, we were talking about Hezekiah's tunnel and, and the king Hezekiah and how good he was as a king. Well, in chapter 20, 2 Kings chapter 2, excuse me, 2 Kings chapter 20, the prophet Isaiah comes up to Hezekiah and tells Hezekiah, who is sick, that, buddy, I, uh, you got to get your things in order because you're not going to live through this. <laughs> That's what he told him. Not the news you want to hear from a prophet. And Hezekiah lays, turns over in a bed and he begins to weep and to sob and he begs God to save him. And God does. And because of that request and that answer, terrible things took place to the kingdom shortly after. He got the big head. He got proud. He started showing off what God had done and he claimed it for himself and the kingdom was attacked because of it. God sees the consequences that we don't see. And folks, if it's bad enough, he says, no, there's a reason for it. Sometimes the answer is no, unless we become over blessed and we forget God. We'll talk about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 coming up, but also in Romans chapter 1, verse 18 through 19, <laughs> not a good passage. But it says that they intentionally forgot God. And in doing so and not being grateful for what he had done. Well, just read our newspaper and you'll find out. Because we're living it. Sometimes if we had it all easy, we would not worry about God anymore. If we've got it all together, we don't need him. So we don't need to pray to him. We don't need to rub that genie bottle anymore. We're doing all right. Lord, help us. He sees all of the answers. The requests that we have, we're expecting one answer. He sees them all and he sees what's best. And sometimes what we're praying for is only better than the situation we're in. And he says, no, I have something that's not better, but best for you. And that's what I'm going to give you. And sometimes that means your better answer is a no. <laughs> and we should be glad again. Amen. We might not be praying for the right thing. Or sometimes we're praying for something that is too small. And he has something bigger yet. I remember my mom several years ago when she went to start her little daycare, she had her image in her mind of how big it was going to be and that they started in this little hole in the wall of a storefront and it had like 15 or 20 kids and she's like, all right, yeah. And then all of a sudden God says, no, <laughs> we're going to deliver you a school. And the local school said, Becky, we want you to come and, and take over this school. It's just sitting there vacant and it would be used and we'll give you a rent that was ridiculously cheap if you just use the building. 
Now she is the biggest employer of Lake County, Michigan. She has 150 some kids every single day who they pray with and they tell Bible stories to and they share Jesus with. She literally took, it's an elementary school that she took over and she literally took over the entire elementary school. <laughs> Kitchen, gym, all of the classrooms, it's all hers. And now they're trying to do something that they can just give it to her with a little bit of cost. Sometimes when we're praying for something, we're praying this big and God's thinking this big. Now granted, if he gave us the answer of this big right away, we'd probably go, ah, and run away. <laughs> oh yeah. You have no idea how much your pastor has been dealing with that lately. But regardless... Sometimes we're praying too small and God says, I've got something that's best. Sometimes he answers no because we might become prideful and self-reliant. When Jesus wrote to the church at Laodicea, he said, so then because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold or cold nor hot, excuse me, I will vomit you out of my mouth because you say I am rich and become wealthy and I have need of nothing. And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. We'll talk about it in a minute, but sometimes if God just gave us everything we ever wanted, we'd become prideful. We'd become spoiled little brats. And we wouldn't need anything much less God. When he gives us the answer, no, it keeps us humble in seeking him. Because <laughs> we don't have anywhere else to go, right? <laughs> God, I need you. God, I need you. No, you're not getting that. Well, I need something else then. I need something else. <laughs> it keeps us humble. Because our only reliance is on him. And it also keeps us seeking him. Because if that's not the answer, we need to know what the answer is. So we got to keep asking. Sometimes we ask amiss. James chapter 4, verse 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you could spend it on your own pleasures. More often than not, our needs are our wants. And we want them no matter what. Our kids do that, right? Oh, Dad, I need this. Dad, I need this. No, you don't need that. <laughs> and you certainly don't need me to spend my money on that either. If we do that with our kids... You think God does that to us too? Often we're asking amiss because we're wanting to bless ourselves. We're wanting to consume instead of being farmers. We want to consume and take in and, and devour what God gives us instead of planting what he has given us so that it not only blesses us, but it blesses everybody around us. So sometimes he says no. Every time God says wait or a flat no, it's always for our good. So we need to learn to be patient. We need to learn to be content and keep trusting him. Now, finally, in closing to our passage. I'm not going to steal too much because this is actually where we're going to be at Wednesday night. But Paul said this, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above me measure. Notice he says that twice. <laughs> I was given this thorn in the flesh, so I didn't get the big head. And in case you missed it, <laughs> I was given this thorn in the flesh, so I didn't get the big head. <laughs> Concerning this thing I pleaded... That word pleaded is paracleo. It means begged, pulled, encouraged. It is the same root word. It has the same root word as the Holy Spirit. So you think about the Holy Spirit living in your life and it's pulling you and, and pleading with you and encouraging you and drawing you. And Paul says, I was saying, God, please, God, please take care of this. Get this out of here. He was pulling, he was pleading, he was begging, Lord, I need this fixed, I need this fixed. And so he prayed three times that it might depart from me. Verse 9, and he said to me, woohoo, we should all get excited, my grace is sufficient for you. 
for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. If God was going to give a positive yes answer to anybody for doing the right thing, it should have been Paul, right? I mean, he started out bad, but man, he went the opposite way. He was serving, he was getting... We've been talking about it in our Bible studies on Wednesday night. I mean, he, he had a rough life. He endured all kinds of things just so that the gospel would reach one more city, one more country, one more area, one more region. He was willing to go through it all. If God was going to give a positive answer to somebody for doing the right thing, it would have been Paul. <laughs> but he didn't. Now, he didn't tell Paul no. But he might as well have. He said, my grace is sufficient. You know, if I've got a bill that I can't pay, whether I have burned up my money or not, his grace is sufficient for my need. You know, if I have completely blown it and completely lost faith and I have destroyed my life I've made terrible sinful choices I have wrecked it and I come back to him his grace is sufficient for that need absolutely every area for every person every need every struggle we go through his grace is enough that should be encouraging you know, if God's going to bring you through a trial, through a struggle, through a whatever, everything we face is Father filtered. Everything we face, God says, it's going to be enough that I can bring you through on the other side and you're going to be stronger and better and more character. If God brings us through to a spot where it's dangerous, guess what? He's going to give us enough fuel to drive the whole distance through. I say that because this morning I got in my car and usually when I drive, if I have forgotten to get gas, the, the light will come on at some point as I'm driving. No, this morning it was bad enough that it came on immediately. And I was worried at five o'clock this morning driving over here. I um, wonder if I'm going to make it. And if I don't, I don't dare call my wife and have her shoot me because I, I ran out of gas. When we come into circumstances and problems and struggles and whatever you might face and whatever answer God says is no, you can know that whatever he has answered and whatever he has given you and whatever he has provided is enough for the situation. That you not only will make it through, but you will be stronger on the other side. We serve a God that is able and this is why Paul said he could boast about his infirmities and struggles because he knew that somehow, some way, God was going to bring him through. So even if God says not yet, or even if God says no, I'm going to bring you through. Paul had been through it. He'd been through the struggle, and I'm sure his prayers consisted of, Lord, if you take this away, you know, I could be so much better for your kingdom. I could do so much more. I could be much more wonderful. I could spread your word even farther. And God still said, what I have given you is more than enough. You know, it's not about you holding on to God for dear life in the middle of the struggle. We often get, that's the picture, and we get the picture in our mind that, my, my strength is waning, I'm losing grip, I'm going to fail. But that is exactly opposite of what the truth is. Because God's grace is sufficient, that means even if you let loose of your grip, He still holds you by His hand. So are you going through the storm? Have you felt like your prayers have not been answered? Are you weak? Feeling like you might not make it? 
hold on. And even when you can't, believe that his grace is more than enough for your need. Because he's the one holding you. And he says that there is no one that can take you out of his hand. Do we believe that God's arm is weakened or shortened because we have a minor problem? No. Would you stand with me this morning? Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. It really does mean the world to me that you're getting a blessing out of it. If this video was a blessing, make sure to hit that thumbs up button for me. That way other people can find it as well. Here in the link section, you'll find playlists and new videos that we put out. We try to do two or three a week. You can also subscribe to the channel uh, by pressing on my face and then hitting the bell icon, and that will alert you to new videos. May God richly bless you.